Right, here we are, we're at Lakeside Import, so we'll have a look round yeah. and see what we can do. Right, we're here at Lakeside Imports. We got our Land Rover Defender and we love our Defender, no question. But we have had a couple of niggling issues. People say, if only Toyota made a Defender and that got us thinking. Did Toyota actually jump the gun? So this is a Toyota FJ Cruiser. Right, now let's give a little bit of history. So. Toyota started making Jeeps under license from Willys Jeeps back in the day in 1950 something back when the Series 1 Defender was around and they had the original one which was called a J40 and over the years Toyota went up market with their Toyota and it went on to become the Land Cruiser but then they decided and this is about 2005 that they they'd lost track of the younger audience they'd all gone old men like me with families and big four-wheel drives and they wanted to attract a new younger audience so they designed the FJ Cruiser so this is a retro car that they thought would be sort of stylish and attract the younger audience that they sort of lost connection with and it's very capable off-road we'll have a look underneath now obviously we're in the UK Toyota did not sell this model in the UK why don't know ask Toyota if you're from Toyota put it in the comments below but now they're over 10 years old they're now coming into the UK so you can now buy these all and they're right hand drive they're from Japan they did sell them well in America but this is we get a lot of the Japanese ones in the UK they're really capable off-road they took them on all the trials in trails in in the US but right let's have a look let's have a look at them so let's we're gonna walk around we're gonna show you some features the first thing I want to do is compare them so let's have a look round headlights are very retro style round in here somewhere round headlights you've got this sort of prominent grille the sort of very toyota you've got the grill with the land rover defender very defendery you've got this sort of big styly silvery bits okay this one's got holes in but you've got that same sort of dna you've got a similar sort of look now look at these look at these mirrors now bear in mind this car was launched in 2006 this car was launched in 2020 look very sort of four-wheel drive square boxy mirrors look at the wheel arches you've got these very sticky out wheel arches very prominent from the main wing here you've got sticky out wheel arches and what one accessory real fit to the defender is you can actually get the bigger rubber wheel arch covers right let's go around let's have a look around the outside shall we join the windscreen as we move to the side you can see that the toyota windscreen is much less aerodynamic it's much more square blunt but check this out how cool is this when two wipers my first car had one wiper there's one two three almost greedy i reckon but there we go we digress right let's walk along the side so now the first thing you'll notice is quite different about the toyota is it's a four door but it doesn't look like a four door so you've got this funky little sort of suicide door opening thing and we'll have a look at that and we'll have a look at the interior in a minute right let's move along right moving round to the rear this has got a very stylish, big, bold light. I think these are a little less bold, shall we say. Now, but if you look, you've got this sort of, this corner bit, you've got this corner bit, you've got this jutty out middle platform area. You've got this jutty out middle platform area. Now, one thing I'm not a big fan of on the Defender is that when it breaks down, these are your indicators. And when you open the door on the other side, it obscures the indicator. Let's do it there, in case. No one believes me. If I could open my own door, it would help. Right. But on this one, Toyota is clever. They've put the indicators down below so that at least when you're behind and you're working on your car and your back door's open, you can see the hazard warning lights. Right. A couple of other things that are really cool. Check out this back door. Right. Now, we had this problem the other day when we were green laning. We had to get the sheery things out and we we're on a bit of a slope and I was trying to open the door and it kept closing on me. Toyota 2006, look at this, bam, locked. Look, that door is going nowhere. Push, look at that, how simple is that? That door will close. So if you're parked on a slope or wind, you've got the ability to do that. I've got no such ability. 
what a cool idea that would be. There you go, take note, Lando. Right, okay, what else are we looking at? Right, now this is the coolest feature. Let's shut both doors. Now, if you're in a tight parking space and you want to open this great big door, you've got to like get some space to get in there. Now look, this reminds me of the Disco 3 and the Range Rover Sport. Right, what we can do on this one, if I turn the key the right way, there you go, and hold it, turn the key on. Look, so if you just want to throw something in quickly, so say you are green laning and you want to just get the shears out the back, you haven't got to open the door on a slope, just pop open the glass top. Way cool idea that. Right, let's have a look inside the rear. So obviously we've got a similar tread plate. And in fact, this one here is a little more useful as a step. It's a little more durable than the Land Rover one. We'll have a look at that. You've got your tie down point. Now, one thing you don't have in the Toyota is you don't have a, a space under the boot floor. That, that is it as far as I can work out and we'll look underneath in a minute. So we don't have any underfloor storage space. But you've got the same sort of washed down interior and the same, I'll fold the seats down and you can have a look, we'll have the same similar sort of back of the seats with the tie down points. And the other spooky similarity is when I picked up our Defender, there was like some parcel shelf, it was like a hammock. And I thought it might be useful for a cat or something. But look, they've got the same concept here with these sort of upper mounts here that you can, I guess, hook something over. If you go and have a little nose in the Defender, look, you, so we've got the same sort of roughy, tufty mop down floor. We've got the same sort of four hoops here. And the other thing that's quite weird is you've got this small back window. You notice we've got this with this big thing where we've got Jerry's graphics on the other side here. And look, is it coincidence? I don't know. It's weird. But look, we've got a big square. You've got a tiny small back window. Because bear in mind, hello Jerry. You've got this little, hope you don't mind. Bear with us, right? We've got this little bit here and we've got this little bit here. It's, it's spooky. Jerry, have you been getting inspiration from Toyota. Fess up. <laughs> nah, he's not talking to me. Right, anyway, there we go. So, contrasting roof colour. I mean, this is another thing. They've all, you've got the contrasting roof. We went for the contrasting roof. It's sort of, they're oddly back to front, aren't they, George? We've yeah. got like a sort of negative reverse image. Anyway, well, let's have a look how long they are, George. Get alongside. I'm probably better off going that side, I think. Right, we'll just have another look. So obviously we've parked them, so the fronts are exactly the same. And what I'll do is I'll put some, we'll scroll along, then I'll put a little shot with some dimensions up on the screen. So there we go, we've got the different windscreen. The roof, if you just go up a little bit, the heights are not far off, are they, George? The, um, the Toyota is about 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters narrower. So, but, and it's a little bit shorter. If we, as we move to the back, you'll see that the Toyota is shorter because they're aligned at the front and you can see, but there's not a lot in it. They both got spare wheels. They're both mounted at the same position. The Defender's got that very classic square back corner look to it. Right, Toyota handle, look at that. It makes my hand feel tiny. It's got this, I could get two hands on that. But one of the things that they did, the designer, now interestingly, the designer of the guy that designed it, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but he was a 24 year old. He was a young guy because Toyota, wanted to attract a younger audience but one of the things they wanted to do was if you had gloves on because you're in Siberia or somewhere cool and wet and rainy and cold and you have big man gloves on you could maybe had your chainsaw gloves on or you could open the door and you're not and all the controls are very very sort of they're all big and bold we'll have a look we'll have a little sit in well there we go so we've already seen the doors um if you have a look here this is We'll have a look in the Defender again in a minute. Look, you've got your, you've got your wipe down now. People keep going, it's a hose down interior. And people go on the internet, stop saying it's a hose down interior. It's not, it's a wipe down interior, okay? But this is the same, even to the extent where it goes up the middle and you've got this sort of big middle console, the center console, very similar. The seats are, well, they're seats, but they're, they're similar. And this is all quite hard wearing. I like the big speaker grill. Sometimes they can feel a bit fragile in the Range Rover model. So you've got this massive, and look at the size of that. You can get your hand completely round. Everything's big and bold and rah, which I think is quite cool. And that extends actually to the controls as well. 
So yes, talking about everything big and bold. Look, we've got the big controls up there. And this is classic Defender with the air vents at the top, the two side pillars, the three knobs, the stereo in the middle. Anyone with a Defender, and there's plenty of you guys out there, this is very classic. Also with the, the, the air vent on the outside. And in our Defender, we've got that grab rail and we've almost got the same thing going along here, that sort of grab rail that just goes all the way through, gives it a sense of sort of strength. And these are quite funky. We got, I guess they're useful if you're off-road. It stops the glare coming at you from the side because this one comes out and it can sort of form a sideways sort of curtain. Well, that's pretty cool. Right then. Now, I think we'll have to look. We found the rear camera. We didn't show them the rear camera. We'll, we'll find the rear camera, George, and show them. But I guess that must be linked. Some of them were linked to the rear view mirror and some of them will be linked to the screen. Right, we've got the classic old school, no electronics here. You've got a proper lever you have to move to get it into low ratio. So you've got high ratio two and four wheel drive and you've got low ratio four wheel drive and neutral. You've got your... Now, apparently they had an early prototype and they designed the gear stick so it was also a shovel handle and you could like take it out. And they also designed apparently the interior light as torches that you could sort of just unclip and but apparently that never made it from the prototype model into production but that's pretty cool don't you reckon george yeah yeah right so obviously this one is an automatic um we've already seen the automatic gear shift they were also available in manual but i suspect the ones from japan will be more popular and they pretty much all came with a four liter v6 petrol double overhead cam and it also had the VVTI where you've got that variable valve timing um, I think it was only on one of the camshaft like the inlet it had the variable timing right so this in this format the 4 litre has got 239 brake horsepower so that tops by about 3 brake horsepower the 236 of my Defender um, so the Defender's doing pretty well there it's got an engine half the size it's 2 litre petrol and it's put and out the same horsepower but the advantage of this one is you've got masses of torque. So if you're doing some serious off-road, you can just pootle along at low revs and jub, 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 jub. Now, I've not actually started this up. It was running when they gave it to us. But let's have a look how how uh, how massive this sounds. We're in park. So you know you've got a big engine there. It's not racy. It's not about racing around and ragging up and down the high street. This is about sitting um, on highways. This is about going on trails, going off road. So the engine's well suited to it. We've got the cruise control here. We've got lights. We've got wipers. Let's have one of those three wipers. Like, this is going to freak me out. That's weird. There you go. Three wipers. <laughs> this is also weird, isn't it, George? We found it. Let's have the engine off for a minute. Look, check this out. Oh, it's going to beep at me. Right then. Look, look, we've got an extra glove box here. Obviously, the driver's got an airbag here. And we had a little rummage in here earlier. Like, anyone tell me what this is? Like, what's that? Some dodgy pill. Like, some Japanese dodgy pills. What else was in here, George? Some weird stuff, were not they? I don't think they realised it was here when they cleaned it out. I've already got a plastic screwdriver, look. What's that even, George? That looks like some sort of weird thing. Right, anyway, we got a grab. Right. Um, Japanese, right. <laughs> and it, right, the, so the four wheel drive system on this is what they call the A track. Again, I'm not an expert on this, I be, I've just read it. So, but apparently, what it does, and it's, it's quite common, is that if one wheel loses traction, then um, with a differential, all that wheel just spins and spins. What it does is it applies the brake to that one, and so acts like a brake driven differential. So the differential goes, Well, I can't drive that one. So all the power goes to the other wheel, which is really cool. And they also did have a locking central differential um, on some models. I can't see where that is on this one. Obviously here we've got the traction control so you can turn the traction control. And some models even had a switch where you could turn the curtain airbags off because apparently this will tilt over to such an angle that it thinks it's rolled over and the airbags are gone. So there's actually a sort of super off-road airbag turning off mode, which is quite interesting, but I can't see that on this model, sorry. Right, um, let's have a look in those back seats. How, 
So I have a sit in the back, George, and we'll have a look how much room there is for a six foot man like me. This is one cool feature I just learned it's about these doors. In the Defender, the kids get out and run off, and I'm like, shut the door, kids. Look at this. Rear door from the driver's seat. How cool is that? We're just, I'm just climbing into the back, and this caught my thought, oh, what's that? And look, what is this? This, what is all this get up? It looks like it's some sort of trick flare. What have we got to do, George? We've got to pull it. Was it just a candle? Maybe it's just for that romantic. If you want to like big up the romance, just light a candle. I, I wouldn't suggest trying it. But yeah, like if you buy this off Lakeside Imports, you get a free one of those. YouTube, <laughs> YouTube doing whatever with that. We've got no idea what that is. Right. Anyway, before we blow it up, let's let's get in the back. Right. So, how easy is it for me to get in the back, George? Shouldn't be too hard. Shouldn't be too hard. I mean, now let's get. You got that often one problem in cars in the back is the roof starts to slope away. But on this one, we've got plenty of headroom here. The other thing is, I was a bit worried that it wouldn't have isofix seat belts. But I had a little rummage under here. And if you can see there, if I put my, we've got what appear to be the isofix seat mounting brackets. So that's really cool. We like isofix, don't we? Um, right, so obviously all the seats fold, fold down. There's a little button you've got to press here. There you go. Ah, it's just like the Defender. Look, it's exactly the same as the Defender. Even this area here looks the same. It looks like you can sort of, um, they've got these sort of big things. It looks like you can unbolt everything. Well, there we go. We'll put the back down. So it's not quite as flat as the Defender floor. It's got that little slope there. But there's a slight advantage to that, isn't there, George? Yeah. You keep losing things on the Defender floor. Every time we lift it up, it disappears. When you're in the back, you, you you obviously have to push the door open. That's all pretty cool. It's quite easy to get in and out. And I imagine if you had kids in baby seats, I think it would actually be easier to put a kid in from yeah, that definitely. angle than from the other angle. With the door being like that, it gives you easy access to actually lean in. Uh, yeah. Family friendly car. One thing I nearly forgot was this cool grab handle look. You've got plenty of grab handle. Although the Defender's got those nice ones on the side, but you lose those with this car because obviously you've got a side door, but they have given you a sort of roller coaster style hold on to their seat in front. Um, so that's pretty cool. Right, let's put all the seats down and see what the back space compare the two. Now I know most seats are the same, but look, it's even down the same. Look, it's got the isofix points, it's got the toggle there. Pull that up. That even did not that look spookily the same yeah. as that other car? Built in 2006. Put the headrest down. So there we go. And look, we've got the tie down points exactly the same. I mean, I guess to a degree it's standard, but it's kind of spooky. One thing people ask me is where's a good place to have a sleep? No, not really. People said in the Disco 3 and 4, you can sleep in the back. So they said, can you lie out flat in the back? So my feet are pretty much on the edge there, George. Shut that back door and then come around the side and let's... So, my feet, I've pushed this seat forward. My seat, so the problem I got is I can sort of fit in. I guess you have to have some sort of funny pillow thing. I guess if you could design it right, you could probably sleep in here. Um, let's go and see if we can sleep in the FJ. No, we're a little bit tighter in here. We've got the same issue. We've pushed the seat back, but I'm I'm way over the end there. And also it's not as flat. Um, it is quite a slope. Even with the seats folded up, it's quite a slope backwards on that. So it's great. It's not as good as a Defender. The Defender does win on boot space and boot flatness, but it's still a useful space and it's rugged. But one thing we noticed is the rear camera. So the rear camera on the Toyota is down here. Sorry about the wind noise. Um, which is quite cool because you can actually hopefully see the actual back of the camera. Whereas on the Defender, the camera is actually under the bottom here, looking down, and you can't quite see the back of the wheel. Now, obviously the Defender's got the 360 camera system, which is really cool. I mean, it's one of the coolest things we like about the the new Defender, that 360 camera system, and we'll show some more videos on that later. But this is a lot older, 2000, this is 14 years older. So obviously it's gonna, 
but also that's part of its beauty it's before the age of too much complicated electronics and blank screens <laughs> well <laughs> that's what we had on the way here wasn't it george yeah we had the blank screen so all right so there we go that's the bad the bad screen that's the reversing screen it's not as good but you can still see what's going on and it'll be handy enough for reversing up and i think this you can see the back of the tire there it's a bit of a weird sort of fish eye lens but it's perfectly adequate for what we need right off-road capability one thing you'll notice now this is obviously on coil suspension i'm gonna get dirty and have a look down there um, underneath so you can see the suspension setup but you'd already see we've got a pretty massive suspension travel compared to the defender now obviously the defender's got air suspension so it can increase that but this just stock height is quite a lot so let's dive underneath and have a look see if we can see some of this chassis types so here we go so you can see we've got like a conventional chassis rail here and we've got quite a lot of room wasted um under this boot floor area they could have put room there for a for a, a a well to get some extra stuff in but they've just gone for the straight sort of floor um in terms of suspension you've got this sort of lateral linkage panard rod type thing you've got coil there you go you've got a classic rear differential there and you've got the petrol tank you've got these trailing arms here you can see those and you've got rear disc brakes. We haven't got any rear drums. We've got rear disc brakes, which is cool. Right, and let's have a look at the front. Okay, so at the front, we've got double wishbone. And there you go. You can see we've got the coil front suspension. It's hard for me to get. Let me have a look. Under here, there you go. We've got a slightly better view of it there. So in terms of off-road capability, we've got a pretty cool setup. And there's lots of lift kits available for these FJ cruisers out and about. Um, we've got disc brakes on the front, four pot calipers, and it's got quite a lot of um, under armour on the front there. We've got a tow hook there. So there we go. That's the front suspension, not an in-depth tour. Um, I can't quote you the figures on the axle articulation, but you can see where they've cut the it almost looks like they've cut the wheel arches away like on the old Land Rover Defender lightweights um, to give you more axle movement so I'm pretty sure they're pretty capable off-road right let's pop the bonnet have you worked out how to pop the bonnet or hood for our American friends now yeah I mean you guys watch in America these this is quite novel for us Brits to see one of these because they were never sold so right let's have a look see like this little cool it looks like it's blocked off though george george was saying is that i don't think that's like an intercooler scoop that's all blocked there so that's that's just for show that is so there we go there's your six cylinder toyota engine petrol all in there conventional dipstick it all looks pretty mint though. i don't think this one's been yeah used that looks road. i mean these japanese there. cars Ooh. look at look at that because they don't really use salt nice. on the road in japan so when you're buying a Japanese import, you're pretty much guaranteed minimal rust. I mean, just looking underneath there. For a car, this, I've got to do the... Actually, I'm not sure exactly what... Well, we should do, because he's put a 62 plate on it. So that's this actual car, although design was 2006, this car's 2012. So this is a eight-year-old car. Look at it, it's like new. It really is. I mean, just looking at the engine there, that is impeccable. It is. There you go. Conventional dipsticks. No electronic dipstick trickery here. So there we go. I mean, even look at the brakes. Look, it's, there's no corrosion. Wow. So there we go. So I think that concludes our tour. I'll put a link to Lakeside Import, who've been really, they just said, look, just park up, do what you like, do a comparison. I'll take a few pictures now. I'll put the two cars front to front. I'll play some groovy music and you can have a look. I'll put some stats up and hopefully you've enjoyed it. Put your comments below. You're not sure. But I, think, I think we got like 400 comments on that video we put up the other day. So let us know what you think.